It's when the river starts flowing. This supernatural realm kicks in. Things that it touches start to live. John Kilpatrick, the same time Toronto was happening, John was experiencing the Brownsville outpouring. He sat and told me stories one night for a while about some of the miracles that he had seen. He said, I saw a lady about halfway back in the middle aisle. It was late. The service is over, but people are being prayed for. She's standing back in the middle aisle about halfway. Nobody's touching her. I'm over here just watching everything, just making sure everything's in order and everything's flowing well and nothing's crazy. And, you know, sometimes demons will begin to manifest. He'd go help whoever was praying for them and bring his authority in and help get them delivered. But he's just up there watching this. He said, I saw a light, a bright light start at the platform. And it was, became a laser. And it went and hit her right in the chest. Knocked her, he said, probably eight feet, maybe 10 feet backward. She got up screaming for joy. Her husband's watching all this. She was a missionary. They were missionaries for a while. They had come back to the States because she was having, I think it was back issues. I'm pretty sure it was. But the pain was so severe and they couldn't seem to get her help. And she finally told her husband, I cannot live this way anymore. I just need to go on to heaven. I cannot live in this pain. But God just decided to send her a lightning bolt, a laser bolt of healing in that atmosphere. And it went through her chest and into her back and she was completely healed. Three hundred plus thousand people came to Christ in that revival. Millions came, but three hundred over three hundred thousand were saved. John said, "I watched God give a man a new hand once." I don't know if I've ever told you this story here. Another, another late service. Most people are gone. People are being prayed for up front. Maybe a couple hundred people left. Ministers, you know, the team praying over people. John's up on the platform watching it all. He said, I heard a lady right down front, a lady begin to scream. His language, John, he said, she was screaming bloody murder. He said, I don't mean like, ah, I mean like, ah, the top of her lungs, screaming. He thought, oh. Better get over there. This must be a demon, or you know, I need to I need to go help whoever's over there and make sure this is dealt with right or whatever. He walks over, and this lady stint, she just wouldn't stop screaming. Ha! Top of her lungs going. He looks next to her is her husband, who had had half of his hand blown off in Vietnam. He had no, so it's like this. Gone. A little bit of thumb, fingers, some, but about half of it gone. This guy, nobody's touching him. He's standing there. He doesn't know what's going on. He's just kind of like this. John, when she went, ah, he looks over and he said, I could see the light. I couldn't see the angel. I could see the Holy Spirit. I could just see the light. And it was tracing what was there. And every time it would come back, there was more. 
And he said, I stood there for a couple of minutes and watched Holy Spirit give this guy a new hand. I said, John, what did you do? He said, I stood there and screamed with her. <laughs> what would you do? I think we're moving toward another season of incredible signs and wonders, Randy. I think the river's about to rise. As, lead, as a leader, sometimes you, you, you want to see God move so much that you, you just find yourself going, okay, what do I need to do now? If, if, that's, if God is saying this and he's starting to bring the level of the river up, what do I need to do to facilitate this you know and what you don't want to do is strive and try to work it up I think what what we have to do is just make room for him we just have to step out of the box that we've built for him and you know the time constraints and just say you know what uh, you can do anything you want, anytime you want, through anybody you want, and you can take as long as you want to do it. I think what we should do, not right now, like right now, I'm just talking about in this season, I think what we should do is just start in our prayer times, just say, Lord, what do you want us to change here to make room for you in a, in a, in a, in a, in a different way? What, what do you want? What do you want to do? How do you want to do this? You know, and he will inconvenience us because it's a small price to pay when he's finished. But in the beginning, it can seem like an inconvenience. John Gilpatrick would tell you himself that when the revival broke out on Father's Day, in 1995, at first he was irritated with Steve Hill, who had been to England where the spirit was being poured out and the river was flowing. He came back with this anointing and John, who's kind of tired anyway, he said, and run down and weary, he said, Steve, do Father's Day for me, okay. Well, so at the end of the sermon, when you're supposed to let them go have their Father's Day meal, Steve says, oh, no, I brought this anointing back. Anybody who wants to be prayed for, come. well, half the church comes in front. And John stand up there thinking, great. No, that's not what he was thinking. That's, that's what we should be saying. <laughs> I'm with you. But that's not what he was thinking. He said, I was irritated. And I was saying, he, he, John, to himself, Steve, these people have reservations for Father's Day meals. The families are getting together. There's kids in the nursery. Come on, Steve. And he's watching Steve pray for people and the power of God's hitting him. And he's, I, I, you, you can't make this stuff up. He's watching it irritated. When Holy Spirit hits him, he's not worshiping. He's not saying more, Lord. He's irritated at what's happening, and God says, yeah, wham. And he was out in the Spirit all day long till like five or six that night. He couldn't get up. That was the beginning of the Brownsville Revival. So what the Lord 
And when John talks about it, he said, you know, you, you just can't put him in a box. And you have to think if Steve hadn't been there that day, it wouldn't have happened because that wasn't where John was at all. Now, he's a good friend of mine and he, be, he stewarded that revival with incredible wisdom and maturity. So I'm not, you know, John and I are friends. I'm, I'm telling you what he, I've heard him tell. But the key is, I think, just, just letting God do whatever he wants to do. What do you want to do? 